Last week on this program in part one, Isaac and I talked with special guest Twyla Braze, president and co-founder of Citizens Council for Health Freedom. Now, in that program, we identified several of the leading challenges or potential dangers, as we framed it, to health freedom that are unfolding this year as now where we are and going ahead and probably into the years after. Now, today in part two of our two-part series entitled 2024 Health Freedom Trends, Vigilance Required, Twyla will continue with us as we identify several encouraging trends. Now, in a brief summary of last week's part one presentation, we identified that the headwinds of government, uh, government initiated health care policies, which most are now, frankly, uh, are aggressively and increasingly threatening individual health freedom. This trend has become an unarguable reality. And while occurring for a long time, it was certainly catapulted forward as a direct result of the pre-planned COVID virus release and the resultant lockdown policies, the COVID jab intimidation efforts, and the suspension of mostly all prior safety testing and research requirements in place prior to the 2020-2022 COVID release. Now, these factors should not be overlooked. One observation that the Word of God gives us is that as the world and all global leaders lift their fists against the God of heaven, that's what Psalm chapter 2 says, and they reject God's Word as authoritative truth, they in their minds believe themselves to be God. And every aspect of a biblical worldview that we hold to on this program, like the sanctity of life, or God as the creator of life, or God's plan for male and female, or God's definition of marriage and family, or the purpose for the government, as far as that goes, has all turned on its head. Now, once this is done, individual freedom, generally, as designed by God, is attacked, Centralized government is advanced, and tyranny is embraced. Now, this is one of the dangers foreseen by the prudent man of Proverbs 22 that we discussed last week. And though this is reality, there are some ways to prepare, and we talked about a few of those last week. But while the admonition of Proverbs 22 and verse 3 and the wise man looking ahead in all areas of life, seeing danger and taking corrective action, it certainly applies to the area of health, and health freedom, which is our focus last week and today. Now, for some people, the idea of preparing for potential danger or being proactive in regard to looming danger is a foreign thought. For many, they just simply don't know how to do it. For others, it is uncomfortable. Yet, for others, they actually think that if they think and act in regard to potentially advancing danger and make adjustments, that they'll be accused of being conspiratorialist or negative, or perhaps, I've even heard this, guilty of walking by sight and not by faith. But the Bible is clear. Wisdom is clear. To be alert and aware, to prepare or be proactive, is not foolish. It is wise. So how do we do it best is the question, not whether or not we should do it. And with that, as introduction to today's program, I welcome back right now Twyla Brace. Twyla, thanks for being back with uh, Isaac and I today. Always good to be with you, Sam, and you too, Isaac. Uh, Twyla, let's get into it because some viewers right now may not have been with us last week. So if you could just briefly, since this we're going to talk about more of the encouraging trends today, could you just highlight those four areas of greatest challenge to health freedom that we discussed uh, last week? Yes, so I talked about the nursing shortage, the 100,000 nurses that left in 2021. Uh, There's actually a doctor shortage, too, because doctors are giving up because it's not the profession that they planned. Uh, But there's also the Medicare trap. You can get trapped in Medicare. Medicare itself is a trap. Medicare advantage, I call Medicare disadvantage. It is definitely a trap. Uh, Technology and um, uh, AI, artificial intelligence. This is where all the corporations want to take uh, medicine. They really don't want a doctor and don't think a doctor is needed in the room. We'll just put protocols in. We'll have some kind of professional in there. Um, but it doesn't have to be a doctor. 
and so it'll you know we won't have access to doctors and we'll have robots essentially making medical decisions and then the monopolizing of surgeons and physicians essentially the seizure and ownership of them i should say the ownership of them and the seizure of their skills uh, and there's 130,000 providers that already that united health group employs all right, all right, that, that's a fantastic job making it concise. So ladies and gentlemen, these were some dangers that are occurring. They are developing and further occurring. We identified those last week. Go back and listen to that program to get a more full in-depth look at them. But I wanna shift when we come back and look at some encouraging trends that are happening um, that I think you'll be glad to hear about. Truth, flexible or permanent? The Bible, ancient history, or powerfully relevant. Culture, a reflection of enlightenment or warning signs. The pastor, commentator, or frontline combatant. Every day, American Pastors Network speaks to these questions where and when they matter. With hundreds of affiliate radio stations nationwide, a website and mobile app screening today's headlines through the twin lenses of the Bible and the Constitution. Educating, informing, equipping. This is the American Pastors Network. The time is now to stand in the gap for truth. Watch Lighthouse TV wherever you go. Available on Roku, Amazon Fire TV, and Apple TV. You can view our in-house studio productions on demand. Or watch what's on the station right now with our 24-7 live stream. Search Lighthouse TV online on your streaming device. Or go to our website for more information. Visit LighthouseTV.org to stay connected. There you can find out what's currently on the air and coming up. How to watch in your area on cable, satellite, broadcast, or streaming devices. Watch past programs or our live stream. Follow us on social media and learn more about the station, our hosts, and our programming. Lighthouse TV, positively different. Welcome back to Staying in the Gap, and uh, this is actually a, our second program with Twyla Braze looking at being vigilant and uh, health freedom trends that are going on. And so Twyla, you just mentioned some of the things that we have to be on the lookout for, looking ahead about uh, planning about how we react to it, because if you would say, we, I think we could say that there are negative things that are going on. But there are some encouraging things too, and uh, you and Sam, we were just talking before we, we went on air today, uh, that you all have known each other for several decades and uh, I've been listening to you on the Stand in the Gap Today radio program for a number of years and it's influenced me and a lot of people I know have been influenced by, by that in groups like what you're doing. Um, and so there are some positive things happening. Could you talk to us about one of those positives I think you could call something you've been talking about called cash care? And it, it Sounds kind of simple, but could you kind of walk us through what the, the cash care is and what's happening in that area, why, why it's helpful, why it's one of the good trends going on with health freedom? So one of the things that I will say, and I'm going to start by saying that for all of the viewers, you know, when you think about paying cash for care, some people get really afraid that it makes them very anxious. The very idea of it, they look at the prices and they go, I could never afford that. And what I like to say is the price of today does not have to be the price of tomorrow. And all you have to do is look even at what happened to LASIK surgery, where it was $5,000 an eye, and now it's four, $500 an eye. When you have have a cash-based market, the prices go down to the pocketbook. And that's what you need to remember. So uh, care, care is not as expensive as you think it is. They just have hiked up the price 
unbelievably for a whole bunch of reasons. But some of the things that are happening in cash-based care include like direct primary care. These are doctors who are going out on their own. They're hanging their own shingle. You pay a certain amount per month or per quarter or per year. And then you have access to this doctor, you know, sometimes by text even, uh, telehealth, going into the office, you know, weekends, whatever. This is your doctor. This is somebody that cares about you and isn't working for anyone else. Um, There's also fee-for-service doctors like that. And you can find both the direct primary care and the fee-for-service, the ones that have essentially a list, a menu of services with a fee uh, next to it, right? You can find those in like the Wedge of Health Freedom at jointhewedge.com. And even uh, Whole Foods put up a brand new, they're starting a brand new cash-based service called Love.Life. Uh, kind of pricey, but still it's it's in the cash level. And this is good because it means the provider is working for you, hmm. the doctor. I hate to say provider. Yeah. <laughs> and it, it's so interesting. I remember um, right after I graduated high school working at a hospital and I had to go through training and I was just shocked to find out how much uh, money, you know, what they charged for things, but what they actually received from the insurance companies was only a fraction of what they were actually charging. And, uh, and so um, in our family, a number of years ago now, we, we started going that route, like uh, having been encouraged and listening to you. And, uh, and now we're actually part of a, a health sharing group, a Christian group. Um, where if it does get, you know, if there's something major, they, they step in and help. But other than that, we're working out deals and going to doctors and saying, okay, I'm, I don't have insurance. I'll pay this right now. You know what? And it is amazing sometimes um, what the actual price ends up being. The actual price isn't what you thought it was. Um, and so, you know, as, as we look at uh, this, it, could you explain, you know, how does someone get started going to a pharmacy and paying cash? How does somebody get started going to a doctor and saying, I don't have, and I'm not planning on using an insurance card for this. Maybe they have insurance, but they say, I, I want to come to you for this specific reason, and I just want to pay up front. Um, how, how does that even get started, I guess? Yeah, so there are a variety of ways, and it really does depend on the the doctor that, or the clinic or whomever it is that you're going to. Um, some doctors will actually have significant cuts in the cost of care if you are paying and if you pay at the time of service. You know, they don't have to bill you. They, that costs about 25 to $35 just to bill you. Maybe it's even up to $50 now, the whole process of billing. Um, the other thing to think about is like you can go places like you could go to find the Medicare price for for a procedure and you can start at that basis for negotiation. So Medicare pays X. So now you're going to give the Medicare price plus maybe 20 percent more. Um, the part of the reason why the, the cost is so high is the federal government itself says that the the um, the doctors and the hospitals have to provide to the government the charge master price. So the higher the price is, the more likely that they're going to get uh, more dollars from the government. That's one of the reasons. Um, When it comes to the pharmacy, it gets a little trickier, but there are programs, although they sometimes they use your data and you have to think about that. But there are programs that can bring the cost down way, way, way down, like GoodRx. And uh and, and Twyla, I want to follow up. I have two other things I want to go to you on, but uh, uh, people are listening and they're saying, all right, I understand. I think I can understand the advantage to me of going and getting a cash um, price. But uh, build out just a little bit. I mean, I think everybody watching me right now have heard the stories of um, uh, the defense industry charging $1,000 per screwdriver to the federal government, all right? You know, and they say, oh, well, that's just, a, that's just a, a fluke. Well, you and I both know, me being in government and you being involved in it, anytime anybody's accessing taxpayer money from the government, the price goes up. But give just an example. If a physician were to actually uh, operate on a cash basis with a patient. What are a couple of things that actually would reduce his cost, which would allow that physician to charge less money and save him a whole bunch more? Just put some of that in perspective so people can see it in their heads. 
Yeah, so there's so many things that a physician who is working on a cash basis, like at the wedge, jointhewedge.com, right, where they don't take any insurance, they don't take any government, they take cash. Now, you might be a Medicare patient, and but you can come with your cash, not with your Medicare. Um, but so they don't have to do all the reporting, they don't have to do utilization review, they don't have to do quality metrics, they don't have to have electronic health records, they don't have to uh, hook up to the outside systems and deal with cybersecurity issues. I, you know, I wrote a book, Big Brother in the Exam Room, and I talk about the unfunded mandate of that electronic health record. The Surgery Center of Oklahoma has all paper records. They do all cash surgery, and you can just see how low the prices are compared to a hospital. The other thing that I would say is that when you're you want to pay cash, you got this huge deductible. Everybody's got huge deductibles. And unless you have a car crash, you're probably never going to meet that deductible. So if you just ignore the fact that you have an insurance card, don't even mention it. Just say, "Nope, I'm I I I'm paying cash. I'm a cash paying patient." Uh, don't even don't even look out, pull out nothing. That insurance card because you're going to get you're going to have a lower amount of money likely coming out of your pocket at the end of the day if you're not thinking, well, if I could just use up my deductible, well, you probably won't be able to. So why not just pay less money, you know, from the get-go? And it's interesting, Isaac mentioned here that he's a part of a cash system at Christian Sharing Club. And uh, the doc that I go to, who I've had on this program before, um, is actually transitioning to mostly all cash. And so I pay a certain amount, and my wife pays a certain amount, and that does provide direct access, and it is beneficial. I think he just told me yesterday that he has over 100 people on the waiting list. He's trying to find another doc to work with him because there are so many people who want to actually talk to a real life physician and look them in the eye and, and, and actually not have to go through this computerized system that you're talking about. So those of you who are watching me, you know that we have already and already doing that. I'll attest to it. It is far, far better and it is there. And of course, you've been talking about that as an advantage uh, through your wedge system um, uh, twilight a lot. And so Thank you for your work in that area. Okay, let's go another uh, encouraging trend. Um, the, the, the experience with COVID I talked about over the last couple of years has not been a good experience, all generally overall, for sure. But one thing appears to have been the case is that a lot of people certainly have had their eyes awakened to the fact that, well, you know what? Government doesn't tell you the truth. And uh, maybe I better start doing some more work on my own investigation. Talk about how the awakening of that bad experience may in fact and is translating to more alert individuals and that's how that's good for health freedom. Yes, and I'm glad you used the word awakened because that's what I call these people. You know, they might have been asleep before and now they are awakened to what's been happening. And so there are more and more studies and reports coming out and people are watching. They're, they're not watching the mainstream media. They're going to uh, people that they trust. They're watching webinars. They're watching um, podcasts. They're getting um, sub stacks and they're getting themselves informed because they have they figured out during COVID that it wasn't necessarily the hospitals and the doctors who were going to protect them or tell them the truth, but they had to figure this out on their own. And then, you know, in good news, there is, uh, there's more hearings, there's more legislation to protect the people. There are lawsuits, there's a great lawsuit against the uh, FDA for really putting a, a hold, as it were, on ivermectin, not not an actual hold, but essentially just shutting down access to ivermectin by saying that it shouldn't be used, right? And so uh, then, and you can tell what's happening because uh, there's poor vaccination uptake in this country now. The boosters are just, <laughs> there's very few people that are a fan of getting a booster because I think, you know, they're seeing what's happening. They're watching people die too young. They're seeing things that they've never seen before. They've got friends, they've got family, they've, they've watched the YouTubes of people who are affected forever from that shot. And so, you know, there, there's wonderful things happening. I, I, it's unfortunate that there's still 70 colleges that still are mandating the shot, uh, which is just, you know, so dangerous to young people's hearts. 
Um, but there's a lot of people who are choosing not to go to the colleges until they until they stop, and they're they're getting jobs or they're doing other kind of education. They're making up their own minds. <laughs> Again, emphasize the awakening, the awareness, and knowledge, ladies and gentlemen. That's, that's why we're trying to bring this to you. To, if you've been thinking some of these things, just to assure you, there's a lot more people thinking these things, and yes, there are things that can be done. All right, a couple minutes left in this segment, uh, Twyla. Um, this is not necessarily an encouraging area, but a little bit of an, exp- I mean, it's not a negative, but um, the the whole aspect of the individual, individual freedom that we hold so dear when it comes to health care um, seems like it is being attacked and pursued, or at least complicated, at least by government mandate and so forth. Why does government, historically, want to get a hold of health care decisions so badly? Because they're, they're, they are trying <laughs> aggressively. What, why is health care so important, and why does government want to get a hold of those decisions? Well, I like, you know, when we started this organization such a long time ago, and I first heard what uh, the Clintons were planning to do, I said, you know, if they take over health care, they'll take over the country. And you can see what happened during COVID. They used COVID, and they, they you know, fear-mongered so that people would do all sorts of things they wouldn't have been agreeable to before. And so what, it, what you know, government, who really wants to control the public, they want to be in charge, they, the socialists, Marxists, you know, progressives, whoever they are, the elites who all think that they should control everything, they know that they can use fear. And and health is, it's essentially you. It's, it's your mind, it's your body, it's everything about you, your emotions, and they would like to control all of that, keep you within their fear uh, circle so that you are, will do whatever they say that they, that you will do whatever they say that they want you to do. All right, and I think that that's a perfect, concise answer. And that's why, ladies and gentlemen, individual freedom is so important. And that's also why we need to be aware of what's taking place so that we can make those decisions to help defend and protect our God-given freedom. Certainly our health care choices are one of them. We'll be back for a conclusion in just a moment. Stand in the Gap is produced and recorded in the studios of Lighthouse TV positively different. thousand years, pastors have carried the light of the gospel through opposition, persecution, and every flaming arrow of the enemy. But sadly, now more than ever, our nation is experiencing a period of spiritual darkness. But what would happen if churches threw off the shackles of fear and boldly stood for truth? If 100,000 pastors around the nation joined together and committed to preaching God's Word no matter the consequence, pastors who are unaffected by changing times and the opinions of men, what would happen if America's pulpits became aflame with the preaching of righteousness? The great darkness from rejecting God's standards would be expelled, the prayers of God's people heard, our nation healed, and God's blessings restored. The time has come to stand. Welcome back to Stand in the Gap. And uh, we're talking with Twyla Braze about health freedom 
And this is uh, actually the second week that she's been on the program with us. Last week, Twyla, we looked at some of the dangers. You, you mentioned that at the beginning of this program. And uh, we've had some encouraging things, some positive news that are going on when it comes to these trends with health freedom. And so as we look forward and, uh, you know, Romans chapter 14, Paul tells us that we are all accountable to God and uh, that every one of us shall give an account of himself or herself to God. And uh, if you were speaking to somebody and, and he or she is saying, what can I do as a result of this? What can I do stepping, you know, going forward, like Sam's been talking about, looking ahead and being prepared, what steps can I take to be more prepared uh, for my own individual decisions that I have to make, especially when it comes to my health and my freedom? Well, I'm going to just say a few things from our organization that should help. And I think you should have, you know, as in your toolkit, as it were. So we have a patient toolbox to help you with coercive uh, uh, situations in the exam room. That's at uh, patienttoolbox.org. Uh, we're going to have a Medicare handbook that I think everybody should look at. It's not going to be any, it's going to be things you might find online, but we have got things in there about the, the traps, for instance, and you should know about them and you should be thinking about them before you ever sign up. Uh, you should make sure that when you're at the exam room that you're wise with your dollars and you're wise with your decisions and you use your own mind. Uh, don't look to the government and taxpayer programs as your savior. Even as you grow up, you have to understand Medicare is going bankrupt. Uh, you know, in eight years, it's only going to be able to pay 89% of its bills and your life is at stake. Uh, you might want to consider social, um, no, uh, Samaritan Ministries, for instance, which is healthcare sharing. And Samaritan allows you to stay in even if you're in Medicare. Uh, I think another one of those uh, ministries also has essentially a Medigap policy for, uh, for Christians that they could use. And so there are these kind of things. Uh, you have to be prepared. Get ivermectin from Tennessee, for instance. There's a lot of things that ivermectin are for even beyond COVID, uh, but they don't want to let you have it. So Tennessee gives it to you without a prescription. Uh, order it from Tennessee. If you're going through Tennessee, go stop and get some. You know, these are the kind of things where you have to protect yourself and, and think about it. And don't just wait until you're sick and then, you know, just take whatever comes. Uh, all right, Twyla, again, excellent. So much information on today's program and last program. Thank you so much, and I thank for all the viewers the information of how to get a hold of uh, Twyla's organization, and she has a lot more information. Uh, she just referenced a couple of things, but do go there. Good information. I can attest to that. So thanks again, Twyla, for being with us. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for being with us again uh, today. Uh, on this program. And again, this is a two-parter, so if you didn't get the first one, listen to that one and this one, and together I think you in fact will get the best handle and an understanding of the healthcare issue, dangers, benefits, and what you can do about it. And again, that's our goal with God's help to equip and to edify so that you can make right decisions. So with that, I thank you again for watching us today. And again, as I said last week, if you have not contacted us, please do that. It's important for us to know that you are watching uh, from where you are watching this program and, uh, and share as well a financial gift to help us stay on the air and share with us what God is doing for you through this program.